During a night flight over the Pacific Ocean, the captain of an ANA Boeing 737 is finding himself locked out of the cockpit, when suddenly the plane starts to roll and drop violently. Was this a case of attempted pilot suicide, or is the cause more shrouded, or maybe even very simple? You guys have voted, and apparently you couldn't agree on a case, so now we will make a video on each of them. Enjoy! Welcome to Airspace! On the 6th of September 2011, an all-Nippon Airways Boeing 737 was heading for Tokyo on a late evening flight. Nothing special was to be expected on this two-hour flight, and the 737 was cruising smoothly at 41,000 feet. As the aircraft was flying over the Pacific Ocean, the 64-year-old captain decided to take a short toilet break and left the flight deck. Not even two minutes later, he tried to return to the cockpit and requested entry at the door. He could hear that the doorbell sounded in the flight deck, but the door did not open for him. Usually, the other flight deck member that remains in the cockpit lets the other flight crew member in when it requests to return to the flight deck, but only after confirming its identity via a set of cameras located outside the flight deck. But not this time. The door remained shut, and instead the captain could feel the plane rolling ever more and he was pinned to the ground by strong G-forces. At this moment, he thought that the 38-year-old first officer must either be incapacitated or maliciously trying to crash the aircraft. Luckily, the ordeal stopped not even half a minute later and the captain was able to stand once again. He requested entry to the cockpit once more and this time, the flight deck was opened for him without delay. In the cockpit, he found a very shaken first officer, so the captain took his seat and control of the aircraft. He saw that the 737 had lost about 6,000 feet of altitude in a rather short time and asked the first officer what the hell had happened there a minute ago. The first officer's account went like this. During the captain's absence, nothing happened until the very moment when he requested to return to the cockpit. At the same time, air traffic control radioed the flight and requested that it should change its course slightly, a command that should be followed without delay. Wanting to complete all actions simultaneously, the first officer read back the instruction to air traffic control, entered the command into the flight management system and also tried to open the cockpit door for the commander. This is done by a switch on the center pedestal, the instrument panel between the pilot seats. Here the problem began. When the first officer tried to open the door for the captain the first time, he rotated what he believed was the cockpit door opening switch. To do that, the switch must be pushed down and rotated counterclockwise against the mechanical stop. The door locks then disengage with an audible clack and the door can be opened from the outside. However, the first officer couldn't hear this distinctive sound and he saw that the captain tried to open the door, but was unable to do so, so he turned the switch again. Nothing happened and the first officer was slightly puzzled and at this moment, for the first time, he looked at his hand turning the switch. In what must have been a big oh snap moment, he realized that he had not turned the cockpit door switch, but the rather trim switch. These two switches are located here and here, but somehow he must have grabbed the wrong switch and turned it. The rather trim switch that he had turned erroneously feels similar in operation, since it also has to be turned left or right against the mechanical stop. But this switch does not open the door, instead it adjusts the zero position of the rudder of the plane. Due to the manner the first officer had operated the switch, the rudder now deflected far to the left, making the plane yaw. Due to the 737 swept wings, the right wing was now more perpendicular to the airflow than the left one, generating much more lift on the right side than on the left. This made the plane roll to the left more and more, and the autopilot was no longer able to counteract this motion. The first officer now tried to counter this roll by applying full roll control to the right, but the plane flipped over its left wing and reached a maximum roll of 131 degrees to the left, while the nose pointed towards the ocean at an angle of 35 degrees below the horizon. To recover the plane, the first officer held the control column firmly and turned it all the way to the right while applying rudder and correcting the trim he had erroneously applied with the other hand. Eventually, he was able to recover from the dive and return to stable flight after having lost 6,000 feet in a matter of seconds. The captain was baffled by this account since he had not felt that the upset was so grave. Immediately, a cabin attendant was sent through the cabin to check if anyone was injured. Apparently, citing the final report, the only thing they found was some spilled candy in the aft galley. Other than that, nothing was broken and nobody was injured. Most passengers did not even complain. I reckon many did not even realize something happened. There were only two minor injuries sustained by two flight attendants who fell during the high chi maneuver flown by the first officer. 
Apparently, the upset happened in a manner that never caused any significant negative g-force, causing everyone to be nicely pressed in their seats even though the plane was almost upside down. Without external reference, since it was dark night over the ocean, it would have been very hard to tell that the one was almost inverted. Scary, right? Seeing that nobody was substantially injured and the plane worked flawlessly, the pilots continued to their destination. Air traffic control never complained that the aircraft had done some aerobatics and lost 6,000 feet. Apparently the controllers noticed a strange behavior, inquired if something was wrong, but were told by the pilots that everything was okay, and therefore they let them off the hook since no other aircraft was in the air around that time and it was time for a shift change anyway. Still, the pilots dutifully reported the mishap after landing and it was discovered that the maximum allowed G-loading of the 737 had been exceeded. An excessive inspection of the aircraft was launched, but no damage was found and the aircraft was returned to service. The Japan Transport Safety Board investigated the case and was particularly interested in the cause for the first officer's finger trouble. A possible explanation was found. Previously, the first officer had operated the 737-500 variant for four years. On that variant, the cockpit door switch and the rudder trim switch were arranged like this. But just months prior to the accident, the first officer had converted to the 737-700 variant, on which the switch arrangement looks like this. The board noted that it is probable that the first officer felt for a switch roughly in the lower middle of the center pedestal, found it and believed it was the cockpit door selector switch. But alas, on the 737-700 variant, that switch is now located further forward. In the end, this entire event was classified as a serious incident that could have gone a lot worse. Luckily, it ended how it did. This case once more shows how little things can have a large impact and how flawed human action can be. I'll think of that case the next time I open chewing gum only to put a wrapper in my mouth and throw the gum away. Did something similar ever happen to you? I was also a bit surprised to learn that it is actually possible to trim the rudder of the 737 while the autopilot is on, since that is impossible on Airbus aircraft. Anyways, thank you all so much for watching and voting on the subject of this week's video. Also a huge thanks for everyone that bought me a copy with the link in the description. I highly appreciate it and it will surely help me to improve this channel. Leave a like if you enjoyed the video and consider subscribing. See you in the next one.